G'day and welcome to the Hunting Connection Podcast. My name is Zach Williams and I am your host. Here we'll connect you with hunters, fishers and outdoor enthusiasts from around the globe. This podcast will share hunting and fishing stories including past experiences and tackle the tough hunting stereotypes our community faces. We hope to be a positive influence to those outside the community while also having a laugh along the way. Hope you enjoy the podcast. All right, so welcome to episode one. Um, I'm here with my good mate, Luke Turner, who, are, who I've been hunting with for just over four years now. Um, I think he's the perfect first podcast guest to have, so we'll just bring Luke in now. Welcome, Luke. Hey, hey, thanks for having me on. Not a problem. So give us a little um, intro to yourself to start off with, mate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, been bow hunting for quite a few years now. As you know, I was uh, bow hunting in Clare when I lived up there, and um, got onto some deer early on, and that was good, good fun. Um, but yeah, ever since then, I think that was about oh, twenty odd years ago now, or fifteen, twenty years ago. And uh, ever since then, haven't put the compound down. Just target shooting, predominantly started target shooting, and then yeah, as you do with. Um, target shooting you do develop you know the interest of bow hunting and all that sort of stuff so um yeah develop that and then got started getting into rifles and that's actually when about when i met you guys um yep. you and our other friend and um yeah haven't put the rifles down with um mixture of bow hunting and rifle hunting has been good and always been an outdoors guy so yeah it's been it's been a good journey so with the bows what do you prefer prefer tend to shoot with at compound or recurve? Or well, or everything um, everything started with compounds, as they do, but um, with uh, the last uh, four or five years, the romance of traditional archery's got me good, as you know. Um, yeah, <laughs> it sure has. Yeah, I've um, picked up my first, uh, it was a longbow, um, actually tell a lie, sorry, it was a Samic, uh, Samic Sage, it was uh, my first recurve. And ever since yep. then, I was hooked. Um, so I got a couple of longbows after that and then slowly developed um, my traditional archery game. And, yeah, once you get the traditional hook, yeah, it doesn't let go. <laughs> it's definitely yeah. definitely like that. It's yeah. an addiction at the um, best of times. Mm. I started off the other way. I went from recurve to compounds. Mm. Um, started off with just a kid's basic recurve when I was about eight for Christmas. Ran around with that everywhere. That and a slingshot. <laughs> and then progressed to a compound bow when I was about 16, going out bow fishing, and then mm. that um, that hooked me, so to yeah. so to speak. So we'll get into the questions here. So mm. where are you from, Luke? Uh, always South Australia. Uh, never been uh, or never lived interstate uh, yet. And then, uh, yeah, always from Adelaide, um, northern suburbs, so Gawler boy. I've born and bred in Gawler, and yeah. actually there's not much, um, well, there's quite a few deer quite close to Gore, so it was actually good. Nothing really led me too far astray and, and lived in Clare for another oh, 10 years for my apprenticeship. Yep. And yeah, Lots of deer out that way. Yeah, there's heaps out there. So, um, yeah, I lived out there for 10 years, did my apprenticeship as a carpenter and, as yep. you know, yeah, and um, worked up there for a while and then moved back closer to Gawler yep. and, yeah, all the northern suburbs, boy. So <laughs> Yeah, nice. Yeah. So I currently live in the northern suburbs too, so Luke's not too far away from me. Um, how old are you, Luke? Uh, 28. 28? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And what do you do for work now? Uh, at the moment, I'm actually, uh, <laughs> I'm a uh, carpenter that's taken a shot at car sales. <laughs> 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 no, was, uh, the last three years, um, we had some bills to pay, so yep. I needed to, um, get into something else. I was losing my job as a carpenter, so I needed a, needed a job and I fell into car sales. Actually worked out pretty well, so, um, yeah. Yeah, you love your cars. I love cars. I'm you always um, turning them over. <laughs> yep, you go through them worse than you go through your bows. So, <laughs> so you briefly covered this. How did you get into hunting and fishing and the outdoors lifestyle? Uh, I've always been interested in hunting and such. Um, but, yeah, my family, they, well, no one in my family's ever done any hunting or any outdoorsy sort of thing. So I was really the first one to sort of venture out yeah. Um, into it, and I've always had an interest in archery. And really, what it was was um, the trophy bow hunting club up here in South Australia. Um, that's where I did most of my target shooting, um, which then developed. Well, first things was um, goats, yeah, and then um, straight from there to deer. 
um, once you get onto deer, as you know, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it grabs it's definitely you. It's addictive. the same as traditional archery. Once it's, once it's got you, you can't let you go. A hundred percent. Once yeah. you get some of that sweet, sweet venison. <laughs> yeah. So what gear are you running at the moment with? Let's start off with compound. What compound are you running with? Um, at the moment, I've got a uh, Matthews Triax. Um, I've had that for, I think, what, about two and a half years, three years now. Yep, sounds about right. Um, yeah, no, I love that bow. It's a great bow. Um, I've got a quiverizer on that, um, spot hog, dual pin yep. slider, um, and I've, yeah, using nap time um, shafts with Ozcut, um, either Hurricanes or Three Blade Elite Series. Is that the Smackdown 300s or yeah. the 350s? No, 300s. 300s, yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah, they're a good setup. Um, I did try the Infinity Shafts as well from Nexus. They were quite good. Um, but, yeah, I don't just have a bit of a thing with the, the nap time. So Yeah, yeah they're well-priced and yeah. they're quite strong for yeah, good, yeah. their price range. Um, let's go through your main main recurve that you're running at the moment? Um, main recurve is a uh, p- um, a Black Widow, 50-pound uh, at 26 and a half inches. Um, great bow. It's Best a very good-looking bow. It's a very, uh, very nice bow. Um, I've always had the uh, want for a Black Widow for as long as I started uh, a traditional archery. And, yeah, wha- as soon as I shot, I was like, oh, man, it's smooth. Um, I actually got that from uh, a mate, Jack Spinks, and... Um, he said, once you shoot it, you know, you'll never go to a different bow or a different recurve. And, uh, yeah, no, he was right. Yeah. <laughs> shot yeah. it and I was like, oh, God. Yeah, people would have seen it in some of Jack's, Jack's posts. It's yeah. A, no. It's a very beautiful bow. Um, let's go your main hunting rifle at the moment. Main hunting rifle? Um, I would, I've got a, a toss-up between two. I've got the 243 ticker um, M590, um, which is, yeah, my dad's old rifle. Beautiful, nice gun. It's, yeah, you've, you've seen it. It's got the beautiful walnut timber stock, and it's just nice. I don't really like taking it out just in case I get it damaged or whatever. I put a scratch on it. And it's bloody it. heavy. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not that. Well, it is heavy for, you know, a, a, a hunting rifle, I guess you'd say. But, um, yeah, it's either a toss-up between 243 or I have a um, Ticker 300 um, in the Rough Tech Um which is a great rifle. Beautiful um, rifle. It's a really nice rifle. Um, again, uh, I've only really taken that out maybe four or five times, so I've got to spend a bit more trigger time on that one. And yep, yeah, yeah, I'm the same with my 300. I've yeah. got the uh, sister version. Yeah, the um, can't even remember what what one it the is. Strata. The Strata. That yep. is correct. All right, so let's go through your hunting pack. Um, right. right now, we've got. Luke's hunting pack spread out on the floor. Um, I've taken a photo of that and I'll post that up onto the Instagram page at a later date. I just um, sort of like dumped it straight out on the floor. But so this is just his day pack, what he would take out in a morning or afternoon or day hunt. Yeah, so uh, obviously in the uh, summer months I won't have what I've got there, which is a um, basically a, a raincoat, um, which is... Essential for where we go for goats, especially if it starts to rain. <laughs> I guess it can be quite damp up there in the hills at times. Um, moving on, I've just got a three litre water bladder that goes in the pack. Um, I've got some pillowcases there that I use for my meat bags. Yep, they work great. They do. Um, then below that, I've got my knives there. I've got a little knife sharpener as well. So I've got the Victrinox that I use for the main gutting and boning and yep. skinning and all that sort of stuff. Uh, then I've got my my Sufiul, um Bino Harness that has my 10x42 Vortex uh, Diamondbacks in them. Yep. Um, and on that, I've also got a Havilon, um and my Wind Checker. So how do you find the replace- replaceable blade knives compared they're to a fixed blade? They're pretty good. Um, I've, I've never really had an issue with them. Um, they... Sp- they do their job. <laughs> like yeah, I've still yet to buy replacement blades for them. Like I've I've got plenty left in there, but yeah. Yeah, I've got the uh, the Gerber one as you as you know, and um, it it goes good. I've broken you know a single blade. I can break down a single fallow or a single goat on the single blade. Yeah, and that's that's deboning. That's everything. Skinning, gutting. So, I think of you know for what they are, they're they're perfect. They're like, great value yeah. and um, they're lightweight. So I've probably got a bit of overkill of knives there. I've got two foldable knives and then also the Havilon for a day mission. But yeah, yeah. no, nah, you can never have too many knives in your pack. You never. Um, above that, I've got some bowstring wax. Uh, next to that is the 
uh, sunscreen. Um, Zach well knows that I'm pretty fair skinned, so <laughs> <laughs> um, I get burnt quite easily. So yeah, that British some, complex. Yep. Um, so scentless sunscreen, uh, a little compass. Also got some bog roll. Yeah, <laughs> yep, that's essential. I'm sick of losing socks. Yep, socks and <laughs> bottoms of pants and stuff like that. Neck gaiters. Yeah, exactly right. Um, then just some snacks, sugary snacks, some muesli bars. So I usually have the Nature's Gift sour worms, as you know, I'm yep. a big lover of those. Yep, they're, they're great fun for a little bit of sugar. Yeah, quick on a sugar hunt. hit trying yep. to get up that hill. Yeah, um, you know, just a can of energy drink. Um, which I should probably take out the pack now. It's been there for a while. <laughs> Very essential. Yeah. I uh, stock up every every hunt. Oh, that's that's <laughs> the thing. Every every uh, morning we get out hunting, we quickly take a quick stop to a servo to get a, either a couple of pies, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and yes, some energy drinks, but um, some spare broadheads there as well. This is in my um, my bow case. Um, so I'm running a, uh, the Black Widow, as Zach said before, or as we said before. Got the um, Cayuga pilot cuts um, with the bleeder blades. As a spare, um, then a bow stringer, so a uh, spare string as well, and some field tips for when we stump shoot. Yeah, yeah. The um, spare string's essential for when you got the recurve. I like um, Jack's idea of the spare, spr- spare string bracelet that he yeah, does. Yeah, they're awesome. That's, should, um, be, should get one of those. Yeah, that's there. a wicked idea for the trad guys, that's for sure. So we've gone through the pack now. What would you say your top beginner tip is to get into hunting? Ooh, um, patience takes a lot of time. Um, that's that's probably the the biggest one. Yeah, is patience um, with hunting, especially deer. If you're going to go after deer or whatever, well actually whatever it is, it's just patience and yeah. time because it takes a while to build up rapport with farmers and getting land access. And especially if you're in like South Australia, you, it's all private land. So, um, yeah, I'd, patience would be the biggest one for yep. sure. Not a problem. Um, so what would you say your top five items are for a beginner hunter? Top five items. Okay. Um, number one would be boots. 100% get a nice set of boots. It also depends on the sort of hunting you're doing, I yep. think, as well. But, um, yeah, boots would be the first one. What boots are you running? Uh, at the moment, I got the Zambal- Oh no, sorry, I got the Underarm, uh, Under Armour Hovers. Uh, yep. They're quite good as well. I think in rockier terrain and um, steeper terrain, they do fail a little bit because yep. the tread on them isn't that deep. You've seen them, so. Um, but yeah, they're again, quite a light boot, but they're also quite waterproof as well. So you'd sweat quite a bit yeah. on hotter days. Yeah. Well, they, I haven't actually used them in the summer yet. So yeah. We'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, I, I had the Zambalane before that. They were pretty good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're, they're the, my main two. Yeah. Yeah, I'm running the oboes. Um, they're they're pretty good for their value. Yeah. Um, but there's a bunch of bunch of different great great boot companies out there, and yeah, a bunch of South Australia, a bunch of Australian people that are pushing them. Yeah. Pushing different boots. So that's number five. What's number four, mate? Um, number four, um, would be binos for binos? sure. Binos would yeah. be number two. Um, or four. Sorry. Um, always get a good set of glass. Like the, oh. Everyone says it on most, you know, shows or podcasts or whatever. Just get the best that you can afford. Um, even if you're able to stretch it that little bit more, just once you have good glass. I remember when I started, I had just a cheap, crappy pair. It was like 50 bucks or not even that. And um, when I upgraded to the Vortex, all like, like you just it's night and day. You know, yeah, like yeah. What you see and what you can pick out over a cheap set as opposed to the best you could afford. Yeah, I yeah. started off with a cheap Bushnell pair. Yeah, that's and, what I had, yeah. You know, I thought they were bees knees but couldn't see couldn't tell the difference between a goat and a stump at a hundred meters yeah. at times. And then I got a pair of Mavens and yeah, yeah the just the the clearness and yeah. how far you can see and the different like the the different contours. You can yeah. see all the different lines yeah, and all of that. It's 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 a definitely a good um good bit of advice so what what would your third third bit of um, gear? so third bit so we've done boots binos boots, binos um backpack backpack as well. if yep. again it depends on the hunting that you're doing and the terrain that you're in but um comfort i find is the easiest way you know if you're uncomfortable you're going to hate a hunt yeah or you're going to be uncomfortable the whole hunt so if you set yourself up with the right gear um you know you'll you'll 
go longer. You, yeah. you can be more alert, all that sort of thing. I, I just find that um, when I well, since I started because I, I started the wrong way. You yeah. know, I went everything cheap. Yeah, so, <laughs> I was did, like, so oh. did I. Yeah, I was like, oh, I no, I don't want to be wasting all this money and then not end up liking it. But, you know, once yeah. you got, get started, it's, yeah, once you get yeah. out on the hills, you, you're done. I bought what I could afford rather than buying once, buy nice and buy once. Yeah, so buy one, yeah, buy it once, yeah, for you know, sure. So what... Um, s- day pack you running at the moment Luke um I've had the uh spiker um I actually don't know I think it's the 30 liter or yeah. it's either 25 or 30 liter and I've had that for since I started um yeah. well since I started bow hunting hard um so the last seven eight years yeah I've had that um and loved it I've never had an issue with it yeah um and it's probably due for a bit of a replacement now but um uh, they still do that pack, so I'd, I know I'd just get that one again. Yeah, you, s- you see them on every every second Australian hunters' yeah. Instagram or Facebook post. Um, yeah. I started off with the Caribbee fifty five liter Ozcam pack. Yeah. Um, for what they are, they're not too bad. They don't ha- really have the support or the strap support. Um, I'm running. I've always packed overpacked for hunts. Yeah. So as you know, as, as, yeah. <laughs> I sometimes uh, pass Zach his bag, and <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Picking up an, an extra 50 kilos. And I was like, what else you got in there, mate? <laughs> yeah, I, I pack, pack everything bar the kitchen sink. Yeah. And sometimes I pack the kitchen sink. Oh, so that's probably not a bad idea, though. Like <laughs> it gets you more, you know, um, acclimatised to, you know, longer day pack hunts or, you know. And that's, back, that's back why I do hunting. it, just to try and get used to it. I try and carry the weight mm. so that I'm used to it. Because when I went to New Zealand, not used to carrying the weight, mm. I went to New Zealand and I died. Um, you know, the guys I went hunting with, they had a smoke in one hand and a drink in the other and they're hiking through, yeah. you know, a th- little bit on the chubbier side. I was quite skinny <laughs> back then before I was married. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just couldn't keep up with them. Yeah, <laughs> they're a different breed. <laughs> so I've heard anyway. Yeah, that's that's number four. What's number one, mate? Uh, all right, number one. Um, tips to start... Now, uh, yeah, top five gear. Top five gear, sorry. Um, so we've done binos, boots, pack. Um, depends if you go bow or rifle. I think, again, you should be shooting the best you can afford. Yeah. Um, I think most, well, I would say the majority of bow hunters would have had a red zone or have shot a, resdo- a red zone <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> at some stage. Because um, I know my first bow I ever bought was a, a red zone. Yeah. Um, and again, night and day. As soon as I went from that to the Martin um, Wildcat, I had uh, it was again exactly. Don't go to your, your cheap stores. Go to go to a proper archery shop. You oh, know, 100%, each yeah. state has at least one, pretty much. Um, mm. And go get sized up. Have a look. Even if you're getting the 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 cheaper of the models, it it doesn't really matter. Like I've got a couple of PSE stingers hanging on the wall, and they're absolutely great beginner bows. Yeah, um, I agree. They're probably actually, I would say, between that and the Bowtech Diamond or yeah. Assassin, as when yeah. I got my first good bow, like the PSE stinger, um, would have definitely been. Well, that was the next contender for me. But everyone always starts like you out on a PSE stinger. Or yeah, yeah. Should. I actually got the PSE Stinger after I got the Dream Season Zevo, but <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I, I got it as a as a fishing bow and just a small game bow. Um, so what would be your top zombie apocalypse weapon? <laughs> top zombie apocalypse weapon. Oh, I don't know. I need some. Uh, I need some background on these zombies. Like, what's the? How do we kill them? <laughs> I reckon we'll go Walking Dead style zombies. Walking, so or heads, heads not, off. not 28 days. Yeah, okay. Um, I wouldn't, I don't know, maybe a sword. Sword? Yeah, sword. I don't know. Um, yeah, they just seem the, the cleanest way. You know, yep. you can, depends if you're getting into a horde, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it would be an AR-15 or something, I don't know. I thought I'd throw that question right in the middle yeah, uh, so just to throw you off a bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, yeah, maybe a sword or some claymores. <laughs> Keep them away. Claymores, <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Just r- causing absolute havoc. Yeah. Um, what have you forgotten on a hunt? Um, hence the glad wrap or ziplock bag bog roll. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've lost many a socks uh, just because of you know forgetting bog roll and you get down into the gullies and you're like oh 
it's too far back to the car. Yeah, yep, you get uh, that I'm uh, not gonna tummy make roll. It there. <laughs> You're like, oh no, <laughs> what am I going to do? Yeah. Uh, so I've lost a few sleeves and lost a few socks. So you learn pretty quick, you know. As I reckon all of us do. You yeah. know, I think I've got two rolls and a little box of bog roll in my bag at all times, just in case. I actually should have put um, baby wipes as well on that, yeah, <laughs> on, on the gear, because, yeah. oh, man, that, they are a lifesaver. Yeah, they're so much nicer. Yeah, they are so good. You feel so much cleaner, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, no chafing afterwards. That's it. So what is your funniest hunting or fishing story? A funniest hunting or fishing story? Actually, it probably would have been pretty recent with you at the goats, uh, at where we go for goats. Um, so Zach's basically... Shot this goat, it's gone down into the gully. Um, me and him are like, all right, let's make our way down. This is al- almost the middle of winter, so pretty slippery. And um, it's hard to tell in videos, but um, it is quite steep, um, the steepest hills I've ever hiked. And um, he's basically, oh, I'm going to scoot on my bum down. So I was like, okay, no worries, let him let him do like you do you, mate. And uh, he's uh, sort of got lost uh, Semi control, I would say. And I was in control, <laughs> I reckon. <laughs> um, it, his bag's just flown straight out from under him, and he's just skidded. I know. I would say, what was it, fifty meters or something? Yeah, fifty, sixty meters yeah, downhill. Just scooting, and it's like trying to catch on the trees and stuff like that on his way down. I'm like, oh man, he's dead here. How am I going to hike this guy out? <laughs> um, but he luckily slowed himself down. I don't know how he did. Um, but yeah, that was uh, that was pretty questionable that day. I've got it all on video as well. So it was questionable, but um, I felt like I was in control. It yeah, no. might have not looked like <laughs> it, but <laughs> from a um, outsider's point of view, I was like, oh, he's gone. No, nah, he was. He did control it. Um, he did slow himself down, but at the initial, you know, when you see that, you're like, oh man, it's on steep country. It's not. It's not good. But yeah, it was all good. <laughs> it's just pretty funny. That was pretty hairy. Yeah, I was. I had the bow in the hand. I was sliding down him digging my heels in to slow down but it's just a clay hill yeah and i'm pushing myself up over the goat tracks because it's steep hill but there's goat tracks on every single level so it creates almost like a stair yeah so i'm grabbing every little little bush that i could and digging my ankles in and then when there's a bush or a rock on the way i was pushing myself up in the air over it so i was getting airborne for little bits and pieces of it i think when you did the old when you got airborne is when you pack yeah shot out yeah yeah, it's uh, it was was quite fun, that one, I reckon. Yeah, I, I would say it would have to be that one, or probably when we were bow fishing and I slipped ass up over, and that was pretty bad. Yep, yeah, yep. straight into the water, like, ass deep. That, or actually, <laughs> now that you mention it, like, <laughs> they all just they come, come rushing back. No, um, the first buck I ever shot was Zach, um, with my 243. He did the old uh, water run yep. into the dam, and, um, yeah, had to go swimming. Yeah, I've got, got that, a good video of I've that. got that video. He, yeah. um, the deer ran out to the middle of the um, dam and sunk. All you could see was the top of the velvet antler floating in the middle of the, the dam and Luke had to strip down to his underwear. Yeah. And Get to see my pasty white legs and <laughs> go for a little swim. Goes for a little swim. I sat back in the sun just filming, yeah. laughing my tits off. Um, so, yeah, it was quite fun skinning it well gutting that deer out when he was soaking wet <laughs> and a little bit of a carry out i yeah. shot a a doe that we hung up in a tree about half an hour beforehand yeah, before yeah. you shot that yeah i'm like there's no way there's any deer around and then sure enough the next the next hill over after he shot that there was the there was that and a so like a, a velvet buck with a spiker yeah and yeah i don't know it was a 150 100 meter shot yeah something like yeah, that I can't yeah remember now, but yeah it was it was a good day that one it was yeah. it was uh, actually our first day out hunting deer together after we got access to that property yeah. so yeah that's what really started or really kicked off the friendship it I guess. did yeah. it did um you might have covered this but the most sketchy slash dangerous thing to happen on a hunt uh yeah it would be one of those slips that yeah either one of us have had at that uh, where we hunt goats like they can be pretty hairy. Yep. Or <laughs> when we went, we uh, me and Zach went to the um, 2017 deer, Wild Deer Expo. Um, I think I know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never let this. I'll never let this one go. Um, so we ended up driving over. We made a bit of a road trip over it. So um, we left here. Was it Friday night? Yeah, it would have um, been a Friday, yeah. late Friday night, and drove through the night. So we left in South Australia on Friday night. Drove over. Um, to be at the Wild Deer Expo in on Myrtleford. Saturday in Myrtleford at um, on Saturday, 
Um, and he's like, all right, we'll just load out my car up and off we go, um, which is which is good. So we, we jumped in. Luke uh, only had a work car at this time. Yeah, so that's we right. couldn't, couldn't take my car. He, yeah. he had a um, Nissan Navara as a work car and no, his wouldn't boss wouldn't let him that. use that. Yeah. <laughs> I had a uh, piece of crap old old BF Falcon yeah. that I completely thrashed out. Um, Did we you packed ever? two swags into this thing, bows, all of our gear, yeah. change of clothes. Swags. Um, mm-hmm. Esky food, everything else. So we, um, yeah, dived in and off we went. Off we went, and uh, yeah, we pulled over. I don't remember where we pulled over. So after the deer expo, we um, spoke to a few guys and asked, oh, where could we go look for some samba?" And they told us where to go, and we headed up over these dirt roads and went through. Went for a bit of a hike. It was pretty warm out, so mm. we struggled getting up those hills. We, um, we took a nap for about an hour and yeah, a half. Yeah, I fell asleep in the sun <laughs> on the side of the hill because, you know, we drove through the night and then spent all day at the Deer Expo. Yeah. Um, pulled up camp, rolled swags up. We're like, yep, we'll go for an early morning walk. I think we didn't get out of the swags to about 11 o'clock, 10.30, yeah, 11. It was, uh, yeah, it would have been early. In the, m- like, <laughs> in um, the morning. Sorry, late morning. Um, yeah, we went for a walk and we drove. we actually drove from the campsite down towards this really nice creek um, in Myrtleford and park the car up. So I went. I was walking down the stream, um, seeing trout all the, like everywhere. Zach's gone off the other way. Gone for a little dip, yep. you know, just wash off, rinse off, wake up. Yeah, and then I stroll on back up to the Falcon and I'm like, oh, Zach, you got a flat? Because he's obviously the, the dirt roads and whatever else. And Yeah. Um, he's like, no, I don't. I'm like, yeah, you do. It's, it's dead flat. Like, um Anyway, we're like, all right, let's get the spare out to change it. Um, went, unloaded the whole, like, everything out of the car because everything was in the boot, obviously. So swags, eskies, bags, bow bags, everything just came out of the boot um, to get the spare. Sure enough, there was no spare in there, <laughs> except there was, un- <laughs> like, a, heaps of blood <laughs> under there because packing the car full of his, you know, dead... Deer and goats yeah, and stuff and over goats. the years. Uh, but, yeah, I opened up the boot. There's no spare tyre, and I'm like, oh, what the... So I reckon we were probably 45 minutes outside of Myrtleford. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> anyway, there was actually this young enough guy, or a young dude who was ha- um, happy enough to give us a hand. He was um, driving a Nissan Patrol and pulled over and... Um, it was a patrol ute, wasn't it? Yeah, Sing- it was. Sing- yeah, we had a patrol ute. He had his motorbike on the back. We never got his name. I got a... Uh, um, I wish I got his name, so he, could, he helped us out anyway. He plugged the tyre that we slashed, um, got some air into it, which got us to the servo. Um, and it, obviously being a Sunday, oh, it was probably around 3 o'clock this time now, and every survey we went to, we were like, oh, where can we get a spare tyre? We nah, just nah, kept on nah. pumping it up in every town. It kept slowly going down. Yeah. We kept pumping it up, and I think we got to almost the South Australian border yeah. before it was just absolutely screwed. We and passed there was this servo. Well, it wasn't even a servo, was it? Yeah, it was just a little gara- garage. Yeah. Like it yeah. just had a bunch of junk out the front, and we um, pulled up out. <laughs> pulled up out the front. I was like, mate, look, I've, it looked like he was shutting up. I was like, I, I re- we are from SA. We are in need of a tire. Um, so yeah, I was like, mate, have, by any chance or you know anything at all, can do you have a Ford Falcon rim here as well? So funnily enough, he had a tire. And a rim, and a rim. Um, which we whacked on, and About then fifty bucks and yeah, chucked fifty it on bucks for off us. you go. Um, <laughs> and oh, it was just to say, like we uh, we kept pumping the spare on the way back, like obviously because we took the plug tire, put it on in the back, and kept pumping that up just in case. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. I'll never let you live that down, mate. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's probably not the most dangerous or sketchy thing, but no. it's probably definitely one of the most stupid yeah, things, yeah, um, especially on my behalf. That's for sure. That probably could have fit into the funniest hunting. <laughs> <laughs> so how would you change the public view on hunting and hunters in Australia? Um, how would I change it? I would actually love to, if someone was to object it, just to actually sit down and have a chat with a, with a proper hunter that has the right views in, in like the way they want to you know, sustain hunting in Australia. Yeah. Um, there's, a, they get a lot of bad limelight from obviously the cowboys that just shoot um, field points at anything. Um, so that's what I would do is if you could educate yourself 
before making your decision because you would find that most hunters um, uh, want to do more for... Yeah, you know. unfortunately, archery gear is unregulated in Australia. So any Tom, Dick and Harry can go down to their local camping shop and yeah. buy a, a cheap red zone bow yeah. with cheap uh, aluminium arrows and a field point and not get any direction in what's legal with bow hunting in Australia. So they... Every now and again, you'll get a kangaroo with an arrow with uh, a field hanging point it, yeah. hanging. And kangaroos have s- such a um, small vital zone. That's why they're not allowed to be bow hunted, plus they're native um, in Australia. So, yeah, yeah. That, that would be my my one tip, would be to just educate yourself. Um, yeah. And I, I do the same, and, and you do as well. Like, I, I won't make an opinion on something um, unless I know you know, the majority or, yeah. or, or yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I, I get well informed of, you know, the subject that we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. About, you know? I don't want to go making false pretenses or false statements about things that I don't know enough about. So I don't think other people should, and you should just take more in than what you see on the news because they only show you some things. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And if you, you get the chance to chat to someone that is opposed to hunting, have a chat to them and find out what their actual views are and why they find hunting bad and then just have a discussion with them and point out what you love about hunting whether it's the food aspect the mm. fitness aspects and all of it or all of it yeah. yeah yeah exactly um how would you say that the public perceives hunting in australia um not not the best actually i would if you were to ask the general public um that hasn't got anything to do with hunting um, in terms of like a city rather than a country town because you, you, you would find most country towns would have no some connection some to hunting. connection to hunting because of what like they what they do and where they live. Um, I would think the the perception of them would be the yobbos that get on the back of a ute and shoot whilst drunk. That, yeah. that's that's what I get questioned about. Road shooters yeah. and just um, absolute cowboys <laughs> running an absolute muck. Yeah, like simple things. Um, when I was out the other night with my brother, it somehow came up. My brother mentioned to one of the people we were with um, about me being a hunter, and they said, "Oh, how could you do that? How could you do this?" And then again, I we had a conversation about it. Yeah. Like I wasn't jumping down their throat about anything, and then they would say stupid things like, "Oh, you sh- you just go out drunk and shoot off the back of you." Well, no, that's not what we do. Like, if you look at the amount of time that goes into what the hunters that you know have the best views on hunting and want to sustain hunting in Australia. Exactly. They they are the ones that you need to talk to, not just people that go out on a farm or a mate's farm and you know have a carton and go shooting. So e- exactly. And I bet if you went into say because Adelaide's our closest city, if you went into Adelaide and just went up to random people mm. in Rundle Mall, say, and you went, did you know there's deer in Australia? Most yeah, people no. would say no, and then you say. Did you know that there was deer fifteen minutes from here? Yeah, they would have that. absolutely no clue. Um, yeah. It's just yeah, a lot of uneducated people on the subject. I reckon mm. in yeah. the th- that 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 would be my my go to would be education. The biggest issue you think hunters face in Australia. Um, the biggest issues that we face, uh, it would be. The issue of, again, those people that just go out and buy a red zone bow and just don't want to put any time in, shoot something, it bounds off, and then, oh, I'm done with this now. It's like they don't put any time in or effort in. Um, Probably sound like a broken record, but I honestly think that those people are doing the worst damage for Australian hunting. Um, Simple, I don't want to bring it up again, but the simple thing about that seal in KI... You know, that was shot with a field point. Yeah. Um, and I obviously, we don't know what bow or whatever or who shot it. Um, but anyone has anything to do with bow hunting will know that, one, they wouldn't shoot a seal, and two, it wouldn't be with a field tip. Exactly. Like, um, <laughs> it's just unreal. When I heard that story, it was... So what do you think about regulating archery gear I'm and bow hunting in South Australia? I'm all for in it. Australia? Yeah, I'm all for it. Uh, if so do you think there should be some type of licensing or... I, I don't know. That's not up to me to decide. Again, I don't um, 
I don't have the qualifications to sort of lay those sort of laws out, I guess, but um, I definitely would object to regulations coming out to them, either, whether that being you needed barcoded arrows or you needed um, to put your name against arrows, I don't know, um, or even if there was a licence. If you, w- you would find, it'd be the similar to rifle hunting, I would think, um, the more people, you know, that are invested in actually doing the right thing would go out, get the licence, go out, get a permit, go out, get their arrows barcoded, do whatever they needed to do. I think that would be um, the best thing. Then do you think that's a barrier to new people entering the sport as well? Because where there's lots of people getting into archery over the years because yeah. of Hollywood movies, mm. Arrow TV shows, stuff like that. Uh, but then having these type of barrier to entries... Maybe just like something as simple as a hunter's education course. Mm. Well, it could be a barrier. You, you could, like, it might fade out some of the people that are half assing it, in, yeah. my, in my opinion. If you were truly invested in finding what you could out about archery and bow hunting, if that's the way you want to go, or target shooting, if, like, if that's all you want to do, if you were truly invested in it, I think you would actually still pursue it. It doesn't matter what ob- objective you got in your way, like us, you know, yeah. we wrote letters to uh, that court case about the the bow hunting incident um and to support bow hunting like it's just I'd, anything to make it easier or um more regulated if that's what it needs to happen to keep it's bow hunting alive it's definitely it. definitely a hard subject to yeah. um tackle that's for sure you know i i think regulating it would be a bad thing because it's puts a barrier to entry you know um, if it was regulated like that when I was starting out, it probably would have been a bit of a deterrent. You mm. know, I put off getting my firearms license for quite a few years because yeah. I just couldn't be bothered doing the yeah. the course, even though that I've been shooting since I was, you know, five six years old. Mm. Um, where archery, you could you could just go down to the archery sh- shop yeah. and buy stuff and practice and get into it. it. Yeah, but I I don't know. I can see it both ways. I can see what you say, but I can also see that if you were full on about archery or you wanted to learn more about it, there would be better avenues to take rather than just go buy a bow and yep. just shoot whatever you see. See, um, yeah, I, I kind of think maybe not so much regulations for bow hunting and archery itself, but maybe a better hunter's education mm. system and a better hunting license in South Australia. Yeah. And even other states, you know, if you want to bow hunt, you have to do a weekend course on... Yeah bow hunting ethics and yeah. shot no, I, placement yeah. and stuff like that. Like, I think New South Wales, you mm, well, kind of have to do for yeah. some of it. I, when I was in the Trophy Bow Hunting Club um, here in SA, they did one through their club. Yeah. Um, and you weren't actually allowed to hunt with the club unless you had done this course. Yeah. And I, I sh- you know, 100% agree. Like, that, it actually opened my eyes up about shot play because again i was going in green i didn't know anything about hunting but i wanted to know more about it so this is how i did it yeah definitely would have like i've never been a big fan of the club scene and stuff Mm. like that um i've kind of just done my own thing with mates and stuff Mm. but having that that would have definitely sped up my process of learning oh 100 and it was good to go there um to not speed it up, but to get yourself educated. Because I was green, I didn't know where to go, who to talk to, or what to do. So I bought my bow, got fitted up by the... Uh, well, after the Red Zone, I got fitted up by Archery Supplies yep. here in SA. Um, or Archery Mart, sorry, before they yep, shut down. Yep. Yeah, good old James. Yeah, Miss James, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, we do, for sure. Um, yeah, so I went there, uh, started doing my shoot, like target shooting, and I'm like, oh, well... What what are these other 3D target shoots that you do? Yeah. And then, yeah, obviously got into that as well. And um, it took off from there for me um, once I got into that. But, yeah, it's just that education course that I did through the the Trophy Bow Hunting Club was amazing. Like, it really opened up my eyes on, you know, shot placement, um, hunting, wind, all that sort of stuff. Um, It was good. So you reckon that if you're getting into bow hunting and, Australia, South Australia, mm. or even in the States, where hopefully we'll have some listeners eventually, um, to go down to your local archery shop, get get set up, kitted out, mm. sized properly. Pro- in proper draw length, like um, everything. You know, you got 
your release aids, there's so many different release aids, um, sights, sight, um, so rests, everything, bows, you know, there's so much on the market now that everything, you know, that's why I love archery so much, it's so individual, you can have any setup and it would be very different to someone else's if you wanted to do that. If you wanted someone else's setup, you get that same setup, but yeah. um, you get sized up properly, you do it right. Um, and then and go you find your local archery, well, not so much archery club, but bow hunting club. Yeah, hundred percent. Go find your well, uh, go find your club. If you're not able to find a club, do as much YouTube you can. Um, YouTube has taught me so much as well. Um, so, what channels would you you recommend on the YouTube side to learning the archery basics? Um, Remy Warren, um, he does a lot. Um, I'm I'm not sure. I learnt I learnt all my basics through the the club so yeah um, i was more so just looking at hunting videos if you're going to traditional archery um again i didn't go through a club to do my traditional archery i literally just picked up a, a cheap bow just as i said i shouldn't um but i knew as soon as i did that i got a better bow um clay hayes he clay hayes, yep. his got some good whole stuff. yeah his whole um self bow his whole traditional um building and all that sort of stuff it's just unreal he taught me so much he's got his own book i've re- i've read that um so if you were to base you know people wanting to get into compo- compound shooting or something off of my what i've learned i've learned everything off of youtube through traditional archery so i would th- i would think they'd have the same similar thing so do you reckon like knocked on archery with knocked john on dudley? archery Don, uh, john dudley he's he's the whiz um uh, in the hushin um crew they Go to Wild Arrow Archery. They do yeah. a whole lot of builds um, through all of the guys there. Um, th- different setups. They actually choose each off the shelf, what they want, all that sort of thing. So you can actually see each bit go on. So that will tell you everything you need to know about, you know, bows and whatever else. Um, but John Dudley's one for sure. Yep. Yeah, awesome. Um, so what would your top five dream animals be? Whether it's here in Australia, Africa, North America, yeah, right. in a mixture of... All well, places, New you know Zealand. One. Everyone's got number one, probably almost the same. Um, elk. Yep. Uh, number specific one. Specific state for? Probably Colorado. 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 Yep, that that uh, seems to be um, the go to. The yeah. go to. Yeah. Uh, it's a dream. I was uh, actually teed up to go there um, just before COVID hit. And yeah. And unfortunately, yeah I, yeah, I had everything pretty well sorted. Ready to go. And then uh, yeah, COVID hit. So that put a dampener on that. Um, so yeah, number one would be elk number two um yeah moose i've always moose, liked moose yeah, yeah. where um, state no nah, but that, i don't really care like, doesn't matter alaska i'd love to yeah. go to alaska. alaska yeah um so canada alaska um anywhere in america i just i just want to get out of you know australia yeah. i haven't been out of sa so <laughs> um number three would probably be uh kudu for sure kudu? actually yeah yeah Beautiful everyone animal. loves kudu yeah. so yeah no, they're an awesome awesome animal is um, that bow rifle oh it would you know again it's traditional bow it would be traditional bow <laughs> for all of them but again we all know the anyone with a struggle stick will you know tell you you have to put that hours in so um i which i don't have at the moment so that's why i've uh sort of slacked with the hunting i just you know i'm not going to take my bow out if i'm not 100 percent on it so yeah. um so that's so uh, elk moose kudu would love um um the the bush pigs in Africa as well. The, yeah, yeah, the bush pig or yeah. the warthog. No, bush, bush pig. Pigs, yeah, 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 yeah they're, they're, cool. they're like they're strange looking. looking. Yeah, uh, and yeah, seeker deer. Oh, this seeker, is all, yeah. So I've already shot red fallow, yeah. you know that sort of stuff. But yeah, seeker deer. Um, ever since that video you showed me of when you were over there with the noise they make, um, it was just coming on dust. So Zach's got this video. Oh, here. um, I've got the sound queued up here. Yeah. So I'll just put that in. Hopefully, it's not too loud. Seeker deer, hee-haw. It's unreal, isn't it? It sends chills through your body when you're hearing it out bush, man. Yeah. It's unreal. All the deer noises that they make, like the the grunt, the fallow grunt, you know, the croaking, the, the roar from the reds. For anyone, well, if you're listening to this, I, I assume you know what a fallow croak sounds like, but... Yeah, that gets you going on a frosty morning for sure. And then the red roar... Unreal. I've only heard it a couple times, but it is an insane sound, that's for yeah. sure. Um, so, yeah, as I was saying before, yeah, Zach um, 
when he went to New Zealand, he showed me a video of this seeker deer he was hunting, and it was literally the the sun was just coming up, breaking the, breaking over the ridge, um, and it like it was nothing was happening. It looked like nothing was happening, and then out of nowhere, that sound that he just put on for the seeker deer came on, and it was like, oh man, like it was the picture. Yeah, that's all you could all you could hear. It was a blur, mm. blurry video. You could just see a couple of little dots, and then you yeah. could just hear the hee haw going mm. and the the seeker stags the seeker stags roaring. Yeah. But yeah, I can't wait to go back to New Zealand and chase them. So yeah, oh, there's so many though. Like I've, I think on in the American animals, you know, you got mule deer, black tail. Like yeah. mule deer, are one of my top ten or top five. Yeah, well, actually not, but you know <laughs> what I mean. Like it's hard to choose. You know, when you get put on the spot, I don't know. I know elk and um, elk and moose are up there for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, moose are up there for me, but I don't think they're in my top five mm. because of just accessibility, like how. Mm easy it is for us to get over there you know elk are pretty pretty standard for us australians to get over there and mm. get onto um moose are pretty expensive so when you're just a truck driver like me yeah. you know. hey i didn't know <laughs> price was a limit so <laughs> I'm like, if you want to put a price tag on them I, well moose is out the question then <laughs> but yeah my my top five would be i'd probably go a little bit different as much as i love elk i'd probably go black bear Yep. Then probably speed goat, the old pronghorn yeah, prong antelope. Horn, yeah. um, African animal, probably a Nyala. Yeah, they're, they're, they're cool. very, very pretty, pretty animal. Mm. Um, yes, I've chased them, but I haven't got one yet. A seeker. Yep. Um, and then a, probably a tar would be. A tar would be good, yeah. That'll so be uh, the ho- 30th. Hopefully, day. my 30th yeah. will get over there yeah. and smash that and maybe a chamois. Hopefully, uh, if if everything goes well, me and Zach are actually for his thirtieth. We're planning on going over there, so that should be good. If all goes well, if all goes well, fingers crossed. <laughs> all right, this one's a weird one. Um, most random fact you know, Luke? Just most anything, ran- anything, anything. Um, I'm not very uh, colourful, so <laughs> 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 most random fact I know. Uh, you know, your ears never stop growing. There you go. There we go. Yeah. Um, so I think we've just come up to a natural pause in the conversation anyway now. Um, where can people find you on social media, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, YouTube? Mm, um, well, I've just recently started a YouTube. Again, I'm not um, fully up and running with it yet. Like I'm doing editing a little bit here and there. So I've got quite a few videos I need to practice editing and all that sort of thing. It takes a while to get a hang of, but I'm on YouTube if you want to go to that. Um, Back to Basics Outdoors or just search Luke Turner. Um, Instagram, uh, I can't even remember my... It was at Luke Turner Hunting. Luke underscore Turner yeah, underscore go. Hunting 93, yeah. I, I believe. I, I reckon think I've tagged it. that a couple times. Yeah. Um, and Facebook's just Luke Turner as well. Um, those are the three. I'm, I've Instagram, Facebook and um, YouTube. So... Uh, yeah, I'll g- I'm going to be, I've got quite a few videos on the, uh, back burner for the YouTube. I've got to yep. obviously, um, start learning how to edit and, you know, sync everything into it, but yeah, it's all, it's all coming together, but yeah. And if people have any questions, yeah, you're, you're happy to help them if they've got basic questions on how to get into oh, the, 100%, yeah. get into us. Yeah, no, 100%. Whether it's um, you've trad got, shooting. Well, we've compound. both now got that, uh, friend, his name's Elias, um, he, well, Zach reached out to me. He was like, oh, I've got this mate that wants to get in. Well, he's into traditional archery, but he's having a bit of trouble tuning. So um, can you help him out? I was like, yeah, of course I can. Yeah. Um, so then Elias messaged me, and uh, it's, again, one of those hunting things. Once you start talking the same sort of shop with people that are like-minded, uh, the community, the proper community of hunting is just um, it's so tight-knit and it's so good. Um, and he's, I would classify Elias now as a good friend. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's definitely a good friend, um, and that's what this podcast is all about, is just talking about, like, the connections we make through, mm. you know, hunting. That, oh, well, that without one. hunting, I wouldn't have met you. I wouldn't exactly. Have met, uh, a lot of good friends. Elias Hunting, well. social media. Social like, media, that's, yeah. that's how we started talking through mm. a mutual friend yep. about hunting on social media. Mm. Elias, you know, um, if you don't know who Elias is, it's Action Mante Outdoors. Yeah think something like that um he's that crazy dude that runs on a treadmill and shoots shoots arrows at targets and (laughs) he's an animal he's all about the uh (laughs) the gym life on on social media yeah no he's a good bloke though um definitely got a lot of time for him so yeah just because i've got this on the soundboard just for you ilias (laughs) (laughs) 
I, I could not let that one pass. I was oh, playing around with You'll have to tell the, the story of that when he comes on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so posted, ho- <laughs> hopefully he he should be the second guest if we can um, work out a time between us all. Mm. But um, thanks for coming on, Luke. It's It's been an absolute pleasure and I'm yeah. glad that you're the first podcast guest for this podcast. No, you're most welcome, mate. If you ever need a hand with anything, you know where to sing out. So, yeah. No, Easy, brother. Happy. Have a good one.